Hello, hello, and welcome to our pre quarterfinal in the Masters Division, Masters Open Division. We have Pacemaker from Chicago, USA, facing off against Still from Ottawa, Canada. Both coming into this game with a 5 1 record in pool play. Only one loss on each of their belts, but this is the three seed in one pool versus the two seed in the other pool, and I'm very excited. I am Troy Weston here with the indemnable Lauren Morgan Murray. <laughs> Did you say intenable? I said indemnable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take it, sure. And I'm very happy to be here with you, Troy, to enjoy this fantastic pre-quarters matchup between the Chicagoans. Pacemaker taking on Ottawa's finest in still. And we'll see which one will progress to the next level in the quarterfinals. And we've got still starting with the disc. The O'Callaghan. Oh, man. Up to Lee. Brand new, brand new. Looking for a reset and finding Ellis. Over to Green. Green missing that, but no worries. Bryce Ring got that. Green maybe getting a little bit of jitters out in this game. Away. And back to Green. Doing a little give go with the handlers, not seeing a lot of options downfield. Chicago playing some tight D, and Hunter gets it in the middle over to Lee. And there will be a call on the field. Lee taps it in. Ellis now. Back to green in the middle. A big swing to Hunter waiting on the other side. Just outside the end zone now, still looking to break the first score on the board. Mike Lee with the disc. Ah, this cheeky little scuba over top to green. And a pick call in the end zone. Yeah, things getting a little bit clogged right now. They need to just clear some space. I'd like to see a dump come back in support because right now they are on an island out there in front of the end zone. Looks like they're just trying to sort out where the player should be when the disc is tapped in. Way and a diving Ellis in the end zone makes the first score for still holding their offensive line for the score. Very nice double dip dive by Ellis to secure that on the second time of asking. It was a spicy flick, pinged in Adam, so it was always gonna be difficult to get under control, but very nicely done by Ellis to corral it and still just taking their time, working it down the pitch, a couple of uh, slightly more adventurous throws. Yeah, still had some really good patience on offense there, really working both sides of the field as we saw them swing it back and forth, looking for that open person, waiting for their opportunity to really shoot it down the field. Um, just small yardage gains a little bit at a time, tick tock, and managed to punch it in there. So still get the offensive hold to open things up with. Be interesting to see how their defense goes. We were uh, talking to them before the game, slash eavesdropping in on their tactics meeting, and they are going to try and shade the back shoulder, force a lot of action under. They know Pacemaker like to air it out deep, and their plan is to make each offensive point last as long as possible. Corey with the pull. Looks like that one's going to sail out of bounds. Not surprising on this windy pitch. We have seen that many a time today and yesterday and the day before as the wind likes to swirl around in this bowl. Stacklin. Has to 
turn around, look for his dump, finding Finn. Up to Acock, and in the middle, a shooting disc got into the bread basket and back to Finn. The dog. And a big layout grab, or bid, but it will still be caught by uh, Acock. And Chicago hold their uh, offensive point as well. That's a rough one for Andy Corey as he sees that one bounce out. He made a huge effort. Let's have another look at this. Everything they were doing was designed to stop these deep shots. It was working for the most part. Corey predicts it, gets the touch, but not enough as Acock collects for the score and then gives us the nice little power walk off. I got a lot of time and a lot of respect for that move. And one thing we usually say at Ultimate is always catch your Ds for situations like that. But with that diving bid from Andy Corey there, I'm not sure he actually had a chance to catch that. Just got enough on that disc to knock it a bit out of the way. Just not enough for the D. There's Normally when we say catch your Ds, it's a moment of admonishment. And there's nothing really you could admonish about that. That was a no. huge effort. The one thing I would say is the second that Still's defensive plan of shading the back shoulder fell apart even just slightly, Pacemaker took that shot to the end zone. And Still's offensive line will have their second run of the game. Ring to pick up. O'Callaghan in the middle. Swings it across, finding way up the line. And to Ellis. There was a, a sensational undercut by Mike Lee that unfortunately was just timed slightly out of sync with the handler. He got acres of space and oodles of unders to be taken. But good shutdown defense by the handlers meant that they weren't looking that way. Into the hands of Mike Lee now on the sideline, looking for Green, finds him. And then a nice around break there to Keelan Way. Bring. Finds Ellis in the middle. And a leading pass to Green to the other side. Stump and a swing again, finding Hunter in the end zone for the score. There's a little bit of confusion as there was a call and a pick, but it was decided that it did not affect the play. So they are going to send that one into the record books. And 2 1 for still, three offensive holds so far, no turns. Things looking pretty clean out there. Uh, yeah, and a very nice continuation pass for there from Max Eric Hunter. Uh, fun fact, former roommate of mine. So a big shout out to Max Eric Hunter. Knows his way around the pitch. And somebody who we can expect to see more of in this game. I think so. He looks like a pretty mainstay of the O-line for still. Yeah, he goes by Max over on the west coast in Vancouver and Eric in Ottawa, where he is from. Uh, and uh, and then a lot of people just call him by his last name in general, Hunter. So three names. In fairness, those are some pretty cool names to have to choose from. So still into the wind as well. The wind is uh, gusting, uh, not quite billowing yet, so you wouldn't sail very far in it. It's coming from the far side of the pitch to the near side, and then from right to left. Stacklin. Valentine Elam. And Ladona. Looking for that over the top backhand, but Ben Venuti in the end zone picking it off for still. Really smart defensive play. Saw it was coming, recognized, stayed, stood his ground, got the D. Steve Armitage, also known as Army, over to CeCe. Clark, up to Army. A nice grab by Davis, keeping the disc alive for still. Looking for his dump, finds Army, and Clark. 
up to CeCe. Davis again with the gainer on the sideline. Back to Armitage. Really smooth offensive flow we're seeing from Still here. They really like working both sides of that field. Nice dump and swing all day long. And Clark throws one just out of the reach of Alex Davis. A really good attempt from Still, but Pacemaker will have their first attempt at a break right here. Alex Davis representing Montreal. 40 years old in that one. He seemed well met for the pace of it, but unfortunately the inside out flick leading pass was always drifting too far out of bounds. Pacemakers now with a huge arcing huck to the end zone. Manages to find Ladona in the end zone for the score and a first break by the Pacemakers. So a great score by the Pacemakers. And again, you can see why still had that defensive strategy coming into the game. Shade the back shoulder. You give them an inch and those cutters are gone for a mile and the deep throws very ready, very willing to send it to them. So 2-2 so far, and uh, still both teams searching to land that first breaking blow, but still on serve in the driver's seat. So we have another look at that immaculate deep shot, and then the jump in as well, veteran experience. Jumping in, not, but still keeping his focus on the catch. Yeah, sorry, they're not a break from the pacemakers. So a hold again, but. It was the first turn of the game, and until that slightly errant throw to Alex Davis went out the sideline, it looked like still we're on for a break. So let's see if Pacemaker can exert a bit more influence, a bit more pressure on this still offense and maybe get it to be a little bit rowdier. Which way is the wind blowing right now, Lorcan? What'd well, you say? I feel like it's coming at us across the pitch from the far side to the near side. And initially uh, I said it was coming right to left, but it really isn't too much. It's mostly directly across the side wind. O'Callaghan finds Ellis. And a big break backhand from Ellis to Mike Lee in the end zone. No one near him. Where was his defender? I have no idea where Mike Lee's defender was. Probably standing still searching for Mike Lee because that is a difficult man to keep track of. He's got a lot of experience, played with Team Canada Masters Open uh, back in 2019. He played with Team Canada Masters Open at the World Beach Ultimate Club Championships. His uh, career highlight was he finished second in scoring in the AUDL in 2016 with 60 goals. And you can see how he was able to rack up such an impressive retinue of stats with moves like that. And then that wasn't an easy catch. He took it in nice snugly. And he's also a stat leader here at this tournament, coming into this game with eight assists and 12 goals, the top of the stat board for Still. So really impressive stuff from Still, responding in kind with a deep shot of their own. So showing they can get it done both ways. Pacemakers so far have only relied on Hawks. So it will be interesting to see if this defense from Still can really take effect and Pacemaker can play through it with some unders. Corey with the pull again for Still. So Collected by Myrie. Acock with the diving catch on the sideline. Big flick huck coming up. Looking for Baker, but will not find him as the wind just takes that one a little too hard to control and reel in. And Pacemaker really are committed to sending it, which is uh, understandable, if somewhat questionable, given their heart problems. Yes, apparently their name is a long line of making. So <laughs> there's Pacemaker and the Grandmasters being Grave Maker and the Great Grandmasters, Zombie Maker. <laughs> All getting its origination from the Chicago Club team 
Haymaker and Pacemaker want to make sure they give a shout out to those three iterations and all the fans back home. Huge bid on the defense. Amazing stuff coming out from Pacemaker. Ira could just not hold on to it through that diving Acock. Beautiful D there. Finn will come pick up. Drops it to Shield. Back to Finn. And a nice swing to Stacklin. Punches it into the end zone for Valentine Ilam. That was the top quality end zone offense by Pacemaker, just swinging it around and then moving the whole defense to one side, stepping back and taking the break back into the middle for another hold. That's 3-3, although both turnovers have been Pacemaker turnovers so far in this game. Pacemaker O-line turnovers, I should say, so far in this game. Obviously, they would get the disc back as we head to a timeout. So we will see you back here in just a minute as we take a message from our sponsors. And welcome back. If you're just joining us now, we are watching a pre-quarter final for the Open Masters Division here in Limerick at the World Masters Ultimate Club Championships. We are watching Still from Ottawa, Canada versus Pacemaker from Chicago, USA. The score is tied at threes and we are yet to see a break today. We are on pace for quite the clash. Both these teams saying that they came here, you know, they're here to have fun. They don't perhaps have upper echelon ambitions, but certainly they want to see how far they can go while still enjoying themselves. And that's a big thing about Wimuk. Limerick welcomes you with open arms with Cade Mila Falcha, 100,000 welcomes. And we try to help people enjoy and experience as much of the culture surrounding the ultimate community here as, much, as well as the ultimate community culture itself. And that's something we've been very successful in. And we get some great streamed games out of it as well. So can Pacemaker get their first turn off this still O-line. Oh, and it might come from this duck back in the corner. Ring thinks twice about trying to catch that and just ducks out of its way at the last second, leaving it in the back corner. That is a tough corner to get out of. And a diving bid. Spectacular play on the defensive end. I imagine Brenton Hard wishes he got the grab, but I'll take that. Pacemaker now with the disc just could not complete the conversion on that. That is unfortunate for pacemakers, but still taking advantage, not going to give up. Hunter now with the disc on the sideline. Finds Lee. Lee looking up his, looking off his downfield options, finding Green and a swing around to Bryce. Ellis in the middle now finds Lee again. Up to O'Callaghan. And a shooting pass from Ellis. Finds Hunter just outside the end zone, who sneaks it into Lee for the score. And the O-line manages to hold, though that was a close one for them. You can understand why he's called Hunter, somewhat eponymous with that play, just seeking that disc out and pure determination, skill, and grit to snag it away over the shoulder of the defender. And then, I mean, you know, you turn around, you're going to see Lee. He's probably going to be free. I mean, if you play for still and you catch the disc and then look upfield, odds are you're going to see Mike Lee open. You're not wrong. But a huge shout out to uh, Brenton Hard on Pacemaker who got that D. Massive D. That is a great pull as well from how it rolled, perfectly staying in the end zone. So here, you get the first pass off. And you're like, well, they're still in trouble. They're still deep in their own end zone. What are they going to do? This is, uh, is this an easy situation? No, I think you'll find it's hard. Tough that they couldn't capitalize in a front corner turnover like that. Yeah, their D-line's got to be kicking themselves a little bit for that one. 
And in the end, still phenomenal grab by Hunter. All kinds of pressure from the defender. And then, you know, Mike Lee just being open in the end zone as he is. And the pull is up. Myri to collect. Stacklin. Finn now on the sideline. Gaining some yards. And a big backhand huck from Ladona and a great rolling grab into Valentine Elam's arms. Patience with that first run through but finds Shield in the end zone for another hold. So Shield picking up his eighth goal of the tournament to go with his 10 assists for a total of 18 stats for the most part pacemaker. A very even team, the stats distri distributed quite evenly across them but Richard Aycock and Michael Shield being particular leaders in that regard. Once again, you see the deep shot from Pacemaker and you see still get punished. We love the ambition of that bid, but you see still get punished for letting their, uh, their people they're marking get behind them. They have to stay on that back shoulder. And Initially when I was listening in, I thought, oh, that'll be interesting. Are you worried Pacemaker are gonna work the unders? When in fact, Pacemaker seemed perfectly content to just keep running downfield until those deep shots become available. Yeah, you can definitely see why Still's defensive strategy is to sit on that back hip. Brenton Hard with the pull again for the pacemakers. Set to O'Callaghan. Ring. Moving his mark around quite a bit, looking for something upfield, finds Green. Way. The mark cutting off a streaking Mike Lee to the end zone. Way finds himself just outside, and there will be a call on the play. Really impressed with Brenton Hard, and you could hear the call from the sideline as well. Just somebody yelling strike. So he flashes down the line, shuts off the continuation, comes back to his proper position on the mark. Really, really great communication. Disc is tapped in, Way's looking at a bit of a messy end zone, finds Green for, Green for the dump and Ellis for the swing. Punches it into Ring with the diving catch. That was all about Green's dump cut. He took his defender to market and sold him for a pretty penny up the line. Comes back around, swing, and then the quick shot back into the end zone. Still seem, uh, to me, a little bit more comfortable with this short game. We have seen Pacemaker finish from this position once before, but it was all about that dump cut by Green and then drag the defense across to the break side and then hit the easy inside scoop to a rushing teammate. Great stuff by Still. Keeping their noses in front, staying on serve. Not a huge amount of turnovers in this game. Still have given up one O-line turnover. Pacemaker have given up two. None of them have been cashed in. Who do you think is going to be the first one to break through? You know, I was just about to say the same thing to you. It's uh, going to be a hard, it's a hard call. I think still. You think still? I think still. I uh, just, Pacemaker could turn it at a moment's notice and then just stick it deep and it'll come out that way. And if that happens, fair play to them. But for the most part, I think that would be an opportunism based one, whereas still are grinding it out. If they can keep their defensive structure, they have the right strategy. They're just really struggling to execute it, understandably against the incredible athletes pacemaker keep in their backfield. Both D-lines having really great chances in that end zone and turning it over in each other's end zones right now. So it could be anyone's first break at this point. Acock with the disc now. Up to shield. A great grab by Stacklin on the sideline and a big backhand again, another huck we see from Pacemaker. Acock in the end zone catches that over a bidding Andy Corey. What a game we're watching here. We're being treated to highlight play after highlight play. These are some fantastic efforts. Again, I want to just take a moment to shout out the great body control from both sides as well. Defenders are bidding, are putting their bodies on the line, but in that process they are not risking the safety of their opponents which is what this sport is all about as we see here big bid 
a little bit close, but for the most part, nice and clean. And there, of course, the team effort of lifting each other up. So Andy Corey, and he's been close a few times. He's he's sniffling. He's searching around like a truffle pig, trying to dig something up. But right now, he's getting nothing but acorns. <laughs> well, Brenton Hart here with a pull again for pacemakers. He gets another pull like he did before and, you know, still could be in trouble in their own end zone again. I think it's every puller's dream to get the pull and the follow-up layout Callahan. Have you ever seen that before? I once did it and dropped the layout. But I have seen it. It's happened a few times. O'Callaghan with the disc now for still. Stole one from the Irish. Green. Finds ring on the around. Pacemakers throwing a bit of a junky look. Green. Corey. Sorry, Way. Ellis. Mike Lee. Just outside the end zone. Great continuation looks from Still. And a beautiful jump in catch. Brian O'Callaghan with the score. I love that play by Mike Lee that was really composed. He catches that disc. He doesn't want to force anything too much. And a lot of people, that first throw, he looked off that he faked and the defender screams through. We see that turn into a turnover all the time. We're going to have another look here so you can see specifically what I mean. That fake right there. How many times do you see that be a turnover? Lee holsters, waits, and then hits. Brian O'Callaghan, the bull from Cork. That man was actually one of the leaders of the UCC varsity team when I first started playing Ultimate Frisbee. So he's quite an inspiring figure back then, and by inspiring I mean intimidating, and by intimidating I mean I was too scared to speak out loud in front of him. <laughs> Something that is still basically true this day. Oh, I find him to be quite a nice guy. Well, maybe he changed after moving to Canada. <laughs> I... maybe. <laughs> Uh, still would like to say hello back home. And, you know, I personally wouldn't mind saying hello to these two people as well. Matt Berg and Joel Landy, who could not make it to Ireland. They are missed here, and you are here in spirit with the team. So, still, 6-5 up. No breaks yet. Can they stay on the back shoulder of these pacemaker cutters? <laughs> the donut with the disc now. Shield. Tamira, Myri, pardon me. <laughs> Valentine Elam with a big flick huck again. No surprise there from the pacemakers and a jumping grab by Stacklin in the end zone will be completed. The thing that makes it so difficult to stay on this back shoulder for still is that the pacemakers have recognized it, so their first cut every single time is an open under that the pay that still have to respond to. They have to take those committal steps. And once you take those, you become very easy to turn with a quick change of direction. And that's exactly what we see here as getting free to collect that one is Richard Stacklin. Parsons was a bit split there with his defender because he had one on the other side of the pitch, which you couldn't quite see on that highlight, but he had to jump off of that person to come over to try to help on that D. Just couldn't get there. So Richard Stacklin, who's just got experience all over the country from Kent State University, Jawbone, Mad Cow, Box of Intensity, Lake Effect, Smokestack, just traveling around playing for so many club teams, bringing that experience to bear here. Fantastic setup. And that's one of the things when you come up with a defensive strategy against these Masters teams. They've seen so much of it before. They're going to have a response. So what is your counterpunch to their counterpunch? Let's see what's still have in the locker. Brian O'Callaghan with the disc. We have the stalwart O-line out here again for still. Ring. Moving it around to green. And back to ring. Green and ring just playing a little bit of pass right now. And there was a travel call, I believe, so it will go back to ring. You can see good work by O'Callaghan here in the popping position against the zone. So he's constantly trying to relieve pressure either by collapsing the zone, opening up a swing, or just getting the pop and hopefully the chance to then shoot through it afterwards. 
Ring finds Lee on the sideline. O'Callaghan to Green. Ring and Green still playing a little bit of pass back and forth, trying to work that zone as hard as they can, waiting for something to open up downfield. Ellis now, back to Green. Lee finding a little bit of room upfield, and... It's been a travel cold, so that one's gonna go back. It's a really good work by the pacemaker zone to limit the downfield availability, and then seemingly just a turnover. So, pacemaker get their award for a lot of hard running by the people at the front end of that zone. Can they turn around and get the first break of this game? 6-6. Six, six. Big moment coming up here in the pre-quarter rounds of World Masters Ultimate Club Championships 2022. Spetter to pick up the disc. Trying to shake his mark. Gets it to Martin. So there's been a pick called downfield. That one's going to come back. I think that was on O'Callaghan. So he's going to get a chance to catch up with Swanson. Very spirited game we're seeing here as well. That is nice. That's actually been Martin with the pulls. I thought that was an eight. It is a six. My bad. Martin's blaze of ginger hair. Yeah, I've been attributing them to Brenton Hard thus far. But it is, in fact, Christopher Thor Martin. Great middle name. Amazing. Wolf catches under pressure. And a flick huck again we see going in the opposite direction. <laughs> but O'Callaghan getting underneath that, knocking that away from the arms of Josh Swanson. Big time defensive play by O'Callaghan to stop the break. And also big time defensive play by, Al, uh, by Colin Green, who put the clamps on Pacemaker's handler to stop him being able to get free and forcing that deep shot out of desperation. I want to give a quick shout out to Colin Green's kids, Jack, Wyatt, and Quinn, who are back home, cheering him on, we host. Let us know in the chat who you're supporting, who you're going for. Uh, it just looks like there might be a bit of a, an injury, so there will be a sub coming in for Pacemaker as O'Callaghan walks the disc up to the goal line. Pacemaker coming back with that reliable zone that's gotten them a turn and a run through D. Big run through D by Michael Egan. And that is the first break of the game. Double happiness we saw there from Michael Egan. I got to tell you, that is not how I thought this would go down. If anything, I thought Pacemaker were going to get a D somehow, maybe off an athletic play, and then a quick classic D line shot to the end zone through a huck but instead it is that zone which clearly is giving Still problems. They trapped Still in their own third for in total probably three, four minutes there. Really impressive stuff by the pacemaker D-line. Weren't able to get it in on the first opportunity, but that second opportunity, some quick passes, excellent effort, and uh, the double happiness as a reward in the end. Here's the run through D. Heads up play, almost gets tripped a little. Ellis just had no idea he was coming there. And there you go. Fantastic for Pacemaker. And that was up into the wind. So now 7-6, a chance to take half with a downwind break. That could be critical as these two teams battle for a place in the quarterfinals. And we just have a timeout right now, so we're going to take a little bit of a break.
We are back. Just want to give a quick shout out to David Smith in the chat. Uh, double happiness is when you get the block and the score. Also known as bookends. I wouldn't know. I don't read. <laughs> Not by choice. I'm illiterate. It looks fun, though. Pacemakers with a pull. Still having to bring it upwind now for this hold on offense. Pull will go out of bounds, and O'Callaghan will. Just about out of bounds. That was a uh, brave call, I suppose, is how I would choose to describe that. Certainly how I choose to describe it on a woof of stream anyway. <laughs> and O'Callaghan did signal before the pull went out of bounds that he was going to take it to the brick line by just placing his hands above his head or one hand above his head with a fist. And that means he's planning on grabbing the disc and bringing it to the brick line. Big mark. Something that I think would be quite effective against this kind of a setup is the aggression of Brian O'Callaghan's fakes. And we've seen a few other still players with similar fakes, and it's just so crucial to move these kinds of zony defenses about. You gotta lie to them constantly with your eyes, with your body, with your fakes. Lie, lie, lie. Trick them. And then use the space that that creates. A lot of great handler movement we're seeing from Still as we hear pacemakers counting out loud the number of passes. Ellis now just outside the end zone line, patiently awaits a ring coming up for that reset pass. Back to Ellis. Looks for that swing, but stays on the same line with Way. Back to Ellis and a nice up the line cut, an inside pass from Ellis to Rice. So now we have another fantastic galaxy point, which uh, I'm just gonna preempt uh, Smith here and just let you know that's uh, like a universe point, only smaller. <laughs> so see, logically it makes total sense, even if rhetorically it's not the best. So 7-7 seven, seven is the tie, great offensive hold tons of pressure but still something still do so fantastically is when they get these continuation swings to the sideline they get to this point there's the fake moves the defense and gets the quick inside that's technically an open side pass but for all intents and purposes it's a break throw still here need a break to take half pacemaker need the hold we have got some tight intense games happening here in the pre-quarters as it is currently 6-6 in the Dead Circus King Louis game which we are showing on our other live stream happening at Pitch 11 here in the Premier Sporting Campus in Europe, the University of Limerick. You can watch both of our streams for free live. They will also stay up on YouTube on the Woof Duff account because we are dedicated to bring you as much ultimate as possible. It's a great learning opportunity with all these fantastic Masters teams. You see the deep, different defensive looks, the different offensive efforts, the strategies, the counter punches, the responses, and of course, the spirit. Eirik with the pull for still. And that's going to sail out of bounds. Stackland to pick up for pacemakers. Also signaling that he will take the disc at the brick mark. So a little bit of even marking happening downfield by some of these still players. Valentine Elam with the big huck. Couple bodies underneath it, but pacemakers are the ones to come down with that shield for the catch. I didn't care for that shot at all. I thought, he's way too closely marked. It's the same third. That's turning in the air and the wind's gonna push it down. Terrible decision. And thinking all of those things, just another example of me being wrong. <laughs> really well read. Shield gets in position, recognizes where it's dropping, gets up, gets down with the score, and gets out here at half. Eight, seven. That break critical is pacemaker. Take half and we'll get the disc back when we return. Uh, the exciting part about this game, the winners will take on Vol Voltron in the corner final. So what come back. What a price. <laughs> Come back and watch the second half of this really exciting game. We'll see you soon.
And we are back for the second half of this tasty game. U.S. pacemakers from Chicago versus Canada still from Ottawa. Pacemaker are up one break. Score eight to seven. So we will see how this matchup goes. Still forced onto the defensive end and forced off their unserved position. That hook careening out the side of the end zone. So this is, this is the power. This is why I always prefer to start on D, because if you can get that break in the first half, this is, it's effectively worth two. So yes, you have to get a break to tie the game in a lot of senses, which is a little unfair. You can win without a break if you start on offense, but the payoff is if you think you can hit them early in the first half, right now you have a chance to go up two points with an offensive hold. Stitch or Stacklin with the disc. Over to Egan. A low throw from a pressured mark from Eirik. A hand block even. And Clark picking up now for Still. Still getting a chance to get a break of their own. Can they capitalize? Corey. Absolutely love any fake that throws the mark to the floor. Thought he was Superman. <laughs> Turned out to be Clark Kent. Speaking of Clark, there he is with the disc. An inside throw that looked rather low and it will be called down. Quickly uncontested. That one's going down again, just showing you the really high spirit, the really high level of respect between these two teams. Stitch with the disc. To Sheil, looking for that deep shot. Couldn't get it off. Eirik with the diving layout D. That's two Ds from Eirik we've seen. Puts up a big one to Parsons, but a little bit of conservation of greatness there, or the rule of 11, as Lurkin likes to say. I'd just say that's a typical defensive line play. Get a big time D that maybe was a bit of a gratuitous layout. He probably could have just ran through and caught it and then throw it away. Disc is centered to Myrie as a pick is called downfield. Valentine Elam. Back to Myrie. Aycock. As we get a pick called downfield, so this one's gonna go back. And Pacemaker doing what they do best is just recycling, not forcing anything until they can open up a deep shot. And there's the movement, there's the shot. Unbelievable read and grab by Ladone. Valentine Elam. Shield. Back to Stitch. Egan just outside the end zone. The donate once again. And Myrie. Looking for that arcing flick and will find his receiver in the end zone. And a close one again for Still to get a break, but Pacemaker says not right now. So a huge offensive hold for Pacemaker. Two substantial ones on either side of the half to ensure that they get that two break bonus. Now they're up 9-7, very much in control of this matchup as we are only halfway through the time. So it's probably going to go to a score limit, especially with how clean these offenses have been. That was, I think, the most turnovers we've seen in a single point so far with four in total. So back and forth, back and forth as we have another quick look. And such a good job of once they're cutting to a sideline, faking to move the defenders. And then just a nice, easy arc into the end zone. Acock on the receiving end of that. Double teaming 
in under these rules works if there is another person who you can mark within three meters then you can then as many people can be in that space as possible so that's where you can get that justification so these people they're trying to flash they might perhaps stay there a little bit too long and encroach upon the double team but as is the nature in the self-officiated sport if it happens for a short period of time a lot of people don't realize and call it quick enough I believe there was an offside called on that pull. A rarity. Very. And I believe it was the pacemakers that were called offside there. Which means they crossed the line of the end zone before the pull was up. <coughs> so still picking it up and looking to go. It's with O'Callaghan in the middle of the pitch. Finds Keelan Way. Up to Hunter. And to Ellis. Hunter. And to O'Callaghan. <coughs> Way. And a soaring Hunter in the end zone for the score. A very confident and competent offensive hold by Still. But we've come to expect that from both teams right now. Still still haven't gotten a break in this matchup. And they have generated a few turns with their D-line. So they've got to muddy these waters. They've got to be able to punch it in and not rush anything. As you have another look, that was a nice leading break by O'Callaghan. And then a beautiful arcing pass by Keelan Way for the assist. Keelan Way, who as current city is Ottawa, is a farmer, which is something you get a lot of love here in Ireland. Not a, not the typical kind of occupation that it comes around. Played with Phoenix from 06 to 2020, so just a legend there at that club and send a little bit of love their way. His career highlight has been winning championships. He's also a part of uh, that very impressive Canadian World Ultimate Guts mix team in 2012 as well as World Under-23s in 2010. So still need this break. Andy Corey with the consistent pulls for still. Really great pulls from both teams. Stitch finds Valentine Elam. Myrie finds a bit of a gainer and it looks like there was a play on that disc from both teams and there will be a call. Uncontested foul. Egan now with the disc right outside the end zone for a pacemaker's hold. Gonna be a foul call. Nope. It seems to have been retracted. So that's just a top quality dump cut by Shield. The shimmy and go. In order to get people to commit to that, you have to attack with such aggressiveness. And it's something that if you're a young player watching this, look at how aggressive they are in their fakes. Much like a fake when you have the disc is basically the, a throw that you don't release. It's the same if you're cutting, as we see the next generation enjoying themselves on the sideline. Ultimate is for the kids, is for the family. We're uh, trying to organize some youth games around the campus as well, renting out an indoor pitch as well as an outdoor field for, I believe, tomorrow. Because a lot of people brought their kids, and we want to make sure we can be as welcoming as possible. Let's have another look at this dump cut. Ah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> He's so hard to keep track of his defend. He ran his defender into the force. We're seeing a lot of kids on the sideline for this tournament, as it is a Masters tournament. So the absolute heroes of the sport, ones that have paved the way and really set the stage, because this is a bit of a newer sport still. So a lot of the people playing here this weekend are pioneers in their own community. Absolutely. As a uh, big hook goes up, they're already past the break mark. Green centers to O'Callaghan. Calls a quick foul.
almost looked like he meant to say contact there, which means a continuation of play because he did look like he was going to continue. Probably realized he said foul, which is the word that stops the play. Over to Ellis and up to Green. Back to Ring and Green in the middle. A little bit of work through this zone now. Still doing a great job again of just being patient, going around back and forth, waiting for their opportunities to break it through. Ellis on the sideline finds Green, or O'Callaghan. Keelan Way now, a Mike Lee in the middle, taking advantage of getting it past that cup. O'Callaghan open on the far sideline. And Mike Lee just outside, knocking on the door. Ring in the end zone for a nice continuation. Really great play, play between basically the whole still team. O'Callaghan initially faking, not committing to anything. He had a slightly risky shot to the end zone. He decided against it. He trusts his players, and why wouldn't you? So we'll just have another look here. There was an opportunity there. He said no to it. You can see just looking off until he can get to Lee. And then there's the quick pass. In for the score to Bryce Ring. Bryce Ring, a defensive handler. He likes uh, break throws. Got into the sport because his friends played it in school and he joined. That was when he was 12 years old. He's now 35. That's 23 years under the influence. He won University Nationals in 2009. He won Canadian Nationals in 2020. And he won a game against Buzz Bullets in 2014 World Ultimate Club Championships, which is a particular high point for him. And his uh, sporting hero, Steve Yeiserman. Some Canadians in the chat could uh, maybe correct me on that pronunciation. He's an NHL player and uh, by Ring's description was a grinder as we see them continue to grind and they're going to have to in order to get back into this matchup. A bit of a rolling pull by Andy Corey and the disc will be centered to Stitch. Bit of an FSU junky look from Still. But pacemakers say, no problem, we can work this disc up. Stitch again with the disc in the middle. And I like the fact that they're giving them different defensive looks. They're not letting them settle. They're hoping to dislodge them, maybe just distract them with some kind of a play. But it's crucial that they don't let those pops relieve the pressure, especially once they've trapped them here on the sideline. Stitch again. And a D block from Darren Clark, really just anticipating that next pass and he gets a hand on that and knocks it down. And picks it up, looking for Phelan in the end zone, but again, knocked away by Michael Scheel. An emphatic D by Michael Scheel, and he's having himself quite the game. Points, assists, blocks, he's doing it all for pacemakers right now. It just seems like Stiller being a little bit impatient once they get that D turn, and they can't quite capitalize it because they're just, they need to, work the disc a little bit more down the field instead of trying to rush it. If they could still their beating hearts and not let the adrenaline take them over. Myrie centers the disc to Stitch. Valentine Elam now with the big huck. Two bodies underneath it. It looked like Andy Corey just forced that pacemaker player Michael Egan to go up a little early there and it sailed both over both of their heads. A smart defensive play. Really laying a trap and luring him in because Slimer Egan, as he's affectionately known, just got a bit of a misread and watched that disc sail over his head. So can they stay confident? Can they stay relaxed and just work this, grind it? Eirik with the disc, dumps it back to Phelan and to Clark. Ben Venuti in the middle. Looking for a Christian Parsons in the end zone and that will be a break from Still. Really impressive response by Still. Working it down the pitch. We'd seen them with these opportunities for breaks earlier and throw them away on Hux. So they've readjusted, they took their time, they worked it through the middle. Lots of quick passes, lots of hard earned yards. 
thanks to the downfield cutting and they tie this game up at 10-10. So we're just going to watch here and see how quickly they slice and dice their way through the pacemaker defense. Zigzagging along. That's a beautiful leading pass just on a plate for Benvenuti. And then he sets up the quick score to Christian Parsons. Both players, Benvenuti and Parsons, we were uh, named to be on the World Ma Men's Masters teams for Australia, but unfortunately we didn't get to go. And I say we because I was actually meant to be coaching that team. The World Masters team for Australia, going to Australia. Going to Australia. That makes much more <laughs> sense. <laughs> And we've got still back on D, some of the same D-line players, Andy Corey with the pull. Let's see how he does on an upwind pull. A little bit out of bounds on that one. Maybe this is downwind. Flags are all going in that direction. It's hard to tell. It does swirl quite a bit in this bowl. Especially in the bowl. It kind of ricochets around the raised earth that surrounds. Because they thought it would be a great idea, and it is for some sports because wind isn't as big a factor, but for ours it can, uh, can be quite problematic. Myrie bringing the disc to center. A little bit of a two-person cup. Spetter, and back to Myrie. Gainer up the sideline to Valentin Elam, and then a round flick looking for the end zone and finds it in the hands of Swanson. So two of my favorite things in Ultimate happened in that one play. First of all, the leaning out of bounds flick, which was absolutely fantastic. He was falling as he got that arcing around. And then the no spike celebration spike where you just gently lay the disc. So let's just have another look at this shot. As you can see, in order to get that off and get around his mark, David Valentine Elam stretching, falling. And then the understated celebration. Big fan of that. Valentine Elam play with Mad Cow, High Five Cocktails, Chaos. And he's vice president of the Columbus Ultimate Disc Association. So we want to give a big shout out to everybody in the Columbus Disc Association. Hope you're having a great time and hope you're uh, enjoying the coverage that we're sending you here from Limerick all the way to Ohio, a trip many of these players will be making themselves when they head to Wuk at the end of the month in Cincinnati. With one break apiece, we're back on serve for these two teams. Still will need another break to take the lead. First of all, they gotta get the offensive hold. O'Callaghan with the disc in the middle. Over to Green. Pacemakers putting on the zone in the other direction now. Green and Ellis. Back to Green. Ring. The still offense. Solid seven that have been on the field every time for this offense, really just working down the field through the zone. Hunter, a great grab under pressure, but cannot get the continue to Mike Lee down the field. Wind just pushing it down, maybe a bit of a miss throw there. I understand the instinct, but the blustered right there as we see a huge shot the opposite way. And that was Thor Martin with that shot, and it is. Deed away, <laughs> really great D, way to get underneath that Corey with that D. We were ready to lose our minds if he could have brought that one down. So this is a big moment for Still, they need this offensive hold. They can't let Pacemaker creep away from them in these, the closing third of this matchup. Ellis to Way. Back to Ellis. O'Callaghan on the sideline, and an around throw to Mike Lee, who was open in the middle, just behind that cup. Mike Lee and Ellis playing a bit of give and go, and Ellis with the score. Brilliant work by Mike Lee again. He is so adept at understanding where the defenders are. Another end zone quick give go, but that fake 
It's all about that fake. So many times, even this week, given the experience of the players, it still happens. People get greedy, they get that tunnel vision, and the defender is able to just scream through and get a sneaky little D coming from behind. Mike seems to have eyes in the back of his head, an aura about him. He feels when people are getting nearby, throws the fake, takes the easy pop for the score, ties this up at 11 all. So, still searching for that crucial second break as we have another look at this big deep shot. Thor trying to send some lightning downfield, but very well deed up. Oh, that was Craig Ellis with the, with the D there. And here we're just going to take another quick look at this give-go play. Really nicely done. Great follow-up runs. And there, so many people, that's going to be a turnover, but not with Mike Lee. And that was actually double happiness there for Greg Ellis if he got the D and the score. Congratulations, Greg. The pull rolls out of bounds, and since it landed in bounds and then rolled out, it will have to be brought to the sideline right on the corner of the end zone. This is a good opportunity for Still if they can shut down the pacemakers right here. Stitch. Shiel. Back to Stitch. And Shiel again. Pacemakers easily working it out of that corner. Looking for some yard gainage downfield. And a bidding Benvenuti, but a huge backhand from Acock. And it will be caught in the end zone by Ladone for the score. That was a thing of beauty. Ladone just chasing it down. I thought maybe he'd have to bid, maybe he'd have to do something special, but instead it just sat and sat like a knitting grandmother waiting for you to come home. And that's exactly what Ladone <laughs> did. A knitting grandmother waiting for you to come home. I might be drawing from personal experience for that particular metaphor. I said like for that particular simile. <laughs> There's a timeout now called on the field, so the players will take a break to see what they can adjust and get to get another break and we will also take one. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. back for this pre-quarters men's masters game or open masters I should say Thor from pacemaker with the pull will go out of bounds O'Callaghan will bring it in at the brick mark so pacemaker are keeping up the pressure not giving up that crucial second break and important to remember they only got one break themselves they got it in the first half and by starting on defense they were able to cash in the O at the start of the second half and double down really heaping it onto still and now they just keep it up. Now still have shown they can go up win. They show they can work through this zone. But they haven't been perfect doing it. And at this point, one more turnover could end this game for the Canadians. Mike Lee centers to O'Callaghan. A low pass for Ring. Keeps it alive. Way sneaks it through to Green. Back to Ring. 
O'Callaghan now on the sideline. Still working their way, swing it from sideline to sideline, hoping that something will open up through the middle. Pacemaker's doing a good job of cutting off anything downfield, but the handlers are still, still working it back and forth. O'Callaghan in the middle of the cup. Back to ring. Finds a Mike Lee in the hole. Not surprising, Mike Lee is so good at finding those holes and a running to the end zone. Off they go. Greg Ellis for the score. A dismissive backhand swish from Mike Lee and it finds nothing but net in the form of Greg Ellis. Catching that for the quick score and that is talking about quick play. I have again seen that throw be a turnover a lot of times but I'm starting to believe Mike Lee might be infallible. Maybe. Great performance by Still. They get that one shot through the zone. There it is. And after that, they're off to the races. That is one downfall of a four-person cup or a rabbit wall, is that if and when the disc does break through, then you have five people on the other side of the disc playing defense on just three. And so it can be a bit of a mismatch if it does break through the cup, if you don't have fast enough players to really contain that next throw, which we saw still really taking advantage of that making it impossible for page makers to catch up. And if you want good containers, well then you only need to look as far as the greatest ultimate bag, the number one bag for ultimate players traveling around the world and facing the elements. That was a nice segue. Mira to pick up, sorry, Myrie. So what is happening now is I believe the pacemaker player that knocked it out of the air, it looked like he had full possession of the disc and then put it down. So still is saying that he has to be the one to take the disc. I mean, it could be worse. They could be calling a turnover because he- Surely that is a turnover if that's what happened. He had full possession and then he lost it. That would be a turnover if they're claiming he had full possession of the disc, but it's going to stay with Myrie. Still putting a zone on of their own. Back to Stitch. Throws it across. Spetter. And over to Valentine Elam. So you can see this zone is really focused about trying to trap people on the sideline, and it has worked! So Stitch could not hang on to that. Floating pass. Eirich now with the disc. Still with a chance for their second break. An aisle flick to Parsons. Into the end zone for Philhan, and that is a much needed break. Oh, sorry, that was Kubinek. That's Andy Kubinek. Kubes for the score for Still. What a time to get the crucial break back. They've waited, they've poked, they've prodded that different defensive look. And I love all the different things still have thrown at this pacemaker offense because they want to upset them. They want them to have an out of rhythm beat to their offense because that is not what you need. Really great stuff from Canada. Ottawa still in this game. And now in the driver's seat. Beautiful flick break as well. Just going to send a little bit of love Christian Parsons way for that fantastic finish. 13-12. Still get the crucial downwind break. And that changes the holds of the game as well. So now you've got to hold downwind. As much as downwind has affected this matchup, which it really hasn't. We've been quite blessed. And big shout out to Koobs there for that rolling catch in the end zone. He is actually an old teammate of mine. I used to play on Union with him back in uh, Toronto in 2015. It's been a while, but he's such a nice guy and a fantastic teammate. That's Cubes with a K. Well, they're going to hopefully put Pacemaker in a box now. Myrie with the disc in the center. Find Stitch. Acock. Stitch, and we see that still four person zone. Trying to trap them on the sideline, but pacemakers can find their way around this time. And Thor to Shield. 
And a hand block from Koobs. Huge play from, from still there. Clark picking up calls a timeout. Not a bad idea as we have seen this still defensive line kind of have a little bit of impatience once they get the turn. So really probably a good calm move to get everyone's heads cool. And we're going to cool off ourselves as this is heating up and it is quite an intense matchup right now. So join us after these short messages. But before we go, just one last look. Kablam! Oh, you're trying to run your way away? Well, let me just kick your legs out from under you. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. I'll be back to you. We are back. Welcome to the pre-quarters. If you're just joining us, this is Still versus Pacemakers, Ottawa versus Chicago, and we have quite a match on our hands. Just to quickly interject to let Jared DePau know that there is not only uh, Masters, there is also Women's Masters, Mixed Masters, Grand Masters, and Grand Masters Mixed, and Great Grand Masters. We're trying to show as many of those games on our two streams, so go back through our catalog and you can find all kinds of Ultimate. Clark now with the disc. Some sit back to Yankee. Leading pass from Yankee back to Clark. And a, he will be shot, but picked off easily by Myrie. I don't think he had a choice to get that D. No, it went straight to him. Thor now centering it back to Myrie and over to Stitch. Myrie looking for that big flick huck that we all know that they like, but decides to put it back to Thor. Still pushing them back just a little bit. But they gain some yards with that one, and it's Shield now with the disc and the big backhand huck. And a bidding catch by the pacemakers will be a hold for them. Acock with that grab. Absolutely incredible. Gonna have to change his name to Acock. What a play. He got that unreal layout D on the opposite end zone. And that one, he must have been all of three foot in the air. Just getting absolutely horizontal. The disc had a lot of spin. There's the pop. Shield's been fantastic for them. He lays it out there, and there's Acock chasing it down, going the bid, and hanging in the air in the exact way that a brick wouldn't. Army just being a couple steps behind, just had no chance on that disc. But honestly, Acock almost had no bid on that disc either. He had to reach out for that one. Fantastic grab, and exactly what they needed to keep it at 13-13. Right before that disc was lodged in Myrie's gut, it was a real threat that still we're about to take a two-point lead right at the end of the matchup. But no, things are tied right here. Thor with the big pull again for the pacemakers. So maybe still falling victim to the turn out there where they wanted to capitalize, but they're still in the driver's seat. Can they hold offense for two more points and book a place in the quarterfinals? Game to two, who do you have? <laughs> there haven't been a lot of breaks, so I, I may have to go with still right now, but you know, emotions are rising. It's hard to stay calm and keep putting in that calm offense as we get going. So I think there's gonna be a couple more turns in this game. It's gonna be a close one to call. Ring up to O'Callaghan. Back to ring. Nice swing pass over the way. Finds a nice gainer into green in the middle. Lee. 
A big backhand, lots of bodies coming underneath it, and that will come down into O'Callaghan's arms. I did not know who was going to come away with that. What a grab. It was a hotly contested battle. Lee hung one up there and just said, go get it. Brian O'Callaghan obliges. And I did want to give a shout out. Brian O'Callaghan put his school experience down to the UCC Coyotes. When I play for them, their UCC Skultimate is what they changed their name to, to align with the skull and crossbones that the university uses. So that's just a big callback for me that I enjoy in Cork. Ireland as well as a shout out to Rebel, a club team he helped form, who are still going to this day, playing Ultimate down in Cork. And uh, also Iron Crow still and Phoenix. So fantastic play. His sporting hero is Nasser Mbe Vogel, a legend here in European Ultimate, both as a player and as a man, is a sporting hero to a lot of us who play on this side of the Atlantic. Phenomenal grab by O'Callaghan. Massive props to him to bring it up to 14-13, one point away from tasting the glory of the Elite Eight here at World Masters Ultimate Club Championship 2022. Brought to you by Wiftif and the University of Limerick Sporting Grounds, our Europe's premier sporting canvas. Andy Corey with the rolling pull going through a couple of the pacemaker's legs before being picked up by Spetter. Myrie over to Spetter again. Finds Valentine Elam through the middle, gaining more yards, moving it down the pitch rather quickly faster than I can get the names off. Just outside the end zone now is Spetter and finding Sheil. Again, looking for a bit of something opening up, perfect. Nice patience there, Ladone. So a rather understated way to bring, oh nope, there's gonna be, nope, they're giving it as a point. Nicely done, thank you for the hand signals. And a shout out to Dimmy, the game advisor on the far sideline for really elevating those palms and letting us know what's going on. So uh, what's bigger than a galaxy? Your ego? What has room for other people? <laughs> I, I guess it must be a universe. It's universe point, ladies and gentlemen. 14 all. And there's going to be just a little bit of conferring. One last time out. This game, 82 minutes in and we're at 14 all, really speaks to the incredible offensive prowess both teams have shown up. Still have the wind at their backs. And they have the disc coming to them starting on offense they started the game on offense they gave it up for half they clawed back in the second half got it back one point ahead all for this power position game 2-1 you drill it at this point these players have all done this drill thousands of times who do you have for this game to one pacemakers you think they're going to get the D I think they're going to get the D and I think they're going to be able to shoot it to the end zone for a score. Now, uh, part of me is picking that simply because, you know, you're going for still, and it's nice to have a little bit of contention. But I think Pacemakers have an opportunity here to pip it at the last gasp. But we will see. I mean, I know I'm Canadian, but I am, I'm still trying to remain impartial. Ah, it's a waste of time. It's overrated. <laughs> Impartiality is for judges. Well, all right then, if you're going for pacemakers, I guess I have no choice. I forced you into a corner. So, will it be smooth seas for still or a heart attack against pacemakers here in the universe point? My heart's beating so fast. Thor looks like he's going to do another pull for pacemakers. Not surprising, his pulls have been fairly epic thus far this game. The God of Lightning. Just let the moment settle. Universe point winner goes to the quarterfinals of the World Club Championships. You could cut the tension with a spoon. Green catches and centers to O'Callaghan. Two names I have said so much this game. O'Callaghan with the up the line and we're seeing a man, a person match look from 
pacemakers right now. It's not something we've seen all game. Maybe they're trying to switch it up, get a little bit of a rattle and still, but still working it up the field. Hunter now with the disc on the sideline finds Lee. Lee looking for some kind of option, finding Green. Green now with 10 yards to go outside the end zone line. Swing break to Ring. Ring just outside the end zone and a diving catch and that's the game! Still are going to the quarterfinals. Professional, composed. That's what you expect to see at this level. That's what still delivered. They took their time. They were relaxed, they were easy. They worked hard against the match defense, took their open shots, even when Lee won a st was on a stall count that must have gotten up as high as eight, I would dare to say. He's eventually able to get it off to green. We're gonna have another look at that. Beautiful break, swing pass into ring. Right up to Keelan Way and a diving catch here from Colin Green. How many times have we seen that play by Still? Dragging the defense over to the sideline. We're gonna have another look. That's Green, gets it back into the middle. Here's the crucial throw. We're gonna move them to one sideline, fake, drag them over and then hit them with the break. And just a little bit of uh, showmanship for the score. So a huge congratulations to Still, commiserations to Pacemaker, and thank you to both of them for a stellar pre-quarter matchup. Looking forward to seeing the quarterfinals in the next couple of days. There's more pre-quarters up uh, in the next time zone bracket, sorry, at five o'clock. So you will be able to see more pre-quarters from this men's master's division. Tomorrow is going to be quarters and you will see still will have to face Voltron. Next up, we have Royal Stag versus Waro, Waro, I can't pronounce that word. Warao. Warao, ultimate, Tumero. And uh, on one pitch and on the other, Magic Toast versus Ensom. Both should prove to be excellent matches. Uh, we are Copyright 2022 World Flying Disc Federation channel. Please join us on YouTube. We are free all day for all of our games. And uh, this has been Troy signing off. And I've been Lorcan Murray. We'll see you next time. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread Ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. Okay, now, team. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.